just when you want to lean on to kind of something maybe supernatural, it yeah. never fully commits. There's like, there's always a rational explanation. Hello and welcome to The Awardist. I'm Kristen Baldwin from Entertainment Weekly and I'm thrilled to be joined by one of the stars of Servant on Apple TV Plus, Rupert Grant. Welcome Rupert and thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, nice. Thanks for having me. Very good. So Servant is a psychological thriller and you play a man named Julian whose sister Dorothy, played by Lauren Ambrose, is coping with the loss of her baby boy. For people who maybe aren't familiar with the show, how would you describe Julian's character? Yeah, Julian, He's an interesting guy. I mean, when I first read him, I didn't instantly like him. He's this very kind of, kind of quite, quite bullyish, um, privileged, arrogant guy who's kind of full of this kind of, kind of bravado. But really, he he is he he's a loving brother, and he and he and he's trying to kind of make everything fix everything. I mean, this that we we find this these characters in in a in a really kind of the middle of this kind of tragic episode and they're all kind of dealing it in with their own ways and they're, and they're not none of them are grieving which is kind of the main thing it's it's kind of about these people and how they distract themselves from actually facing the facing the pain and she's cool with everything she knows the situation I guess we should talk about this. She's gone, you can put the doll down now. I'm fine as I am, Mr. Turner. We lost Jericho when he was 13 weeks. Dorothy took it hard. This is the only thing that brought her back. I should take Jericho for his walk now. How did this role come to you and what did you know about the show going in? Yeah, I knew nothing. I knew, kind of. I, I, I was given this one scene which didn't even end up in the, in the show. It's this. It was this conversation between Julian and Sean about a doll and dropping a baby off at a fire station, <laughs> and with no context at all. Um, that's all I had. But instantly, I kind of knew who this guy was. The, the the writing was so great, and it was the, the just such clear, specific dialogue, and I could just hear his voice almost immediately, despite not knowing <laughs> what I was saying. And yeah, and obviously I knew Knight was involved, so you just you go in with this kind of preconception that something isn't all as it seems. Right, <laughs> something is amiss. <laughs> yeah. After the Harry Potter films, you had done some series TV, some comedies, you did Sick Note and Sa Snatch. And um, were you looking to do something darker or did this just happen to come along? Yeah, I think, I don't think I was looking for anything specific. I'm kind of drawn to interesting characters and, and good writing. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's always I've always been a huge fan of Night, and it's a genre that I I really enjoy watching. So it, yeah, it appealed to me on on kind of lots of many levels. Once you heard the like what actually happens in the show, were you like, how do you even respond to that when you first hear the premise? Because the the premise is crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 crazy to even realize that it's 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 kind of a real therapy. This is is something that kind of mothers that have, have, have lost their baby, they, they, they do this object therapy with, with these, and I, I actually have one of these dolls, weirdly. <laughs> that's a different, that's a different story. Okay. Um, it, was a, it was a weird gift. But yeah, I mean, it is a, it's a real thing and it's, 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 it's fascinating, the, the psychology of everything. And uh, yeah, it was just, I mean, initially we didn't get all the scripts, so I didn't really kind of know kind of how, how this was going to end, but um it was yeah, just as I say, just it was really exciting to 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 not know where you're going and to kind of discover it as you're in the moment and and the fact that it's all in one location kind of yeah. gave us the luxury to film chronologically, which is also a very kind of unique thing. You never really usually get to do that. And then you don't know what's coming, so you find out like you get a script uh, as the episode's about to film, so you're kind of finding out as as the viewer is, is how does that help you develop your character i find i find it really helpful because it's you kind of you only know as much as your character does so everything is kind of a discovery in a way i mean sometimes you do wish you were like a few scripts ahead so you could brew something but it's it's yeah no it's a really exciting way to work i think and it's 
yeah, it keeps you definitely kind of on your toes, and you you really kind of don't know where where your character is is going to go, and you don't know who to trust. Is that's the whole thing with this? I think you don't know who's who's who are the good people in this, and right. I find that kind of really thrilling. So even though this is darker material, you also get to be really funny on this show, and especially season two is incredibly funny. Did you know going in? Like that there was going to be so much humor in Servant? Um, no, not really, no. I mean, I think um, Julian was always, it, it has this kind of um, language that um, it's just so brash and kind of blunt, um, which I always kind of enjoy. I enjoyed that. And I think, I think in, in, in life, the, in the kind of darkest situations, it's a, it's a human thing to, to look for humor and, and see the light side of things. Do you think they're writing more humor into you? Because I feel to your, you know, because you're so good at it. Because season one, there are so many funny moments, like when you, Julian, throws the lobster ice cream. You know, get away from me. You know, can't stand the lobster ice cream. And then this season, just so much funny. You know, it seems like they're really leaning into that. I know. I think you could look at it as kind of this black kind of comedy. Um, yeah. I mean, it, I, that's what I kind of love about the show is, is is also kind of the surreal kind of elements and, and the food as well has got a huge part of it. It's just sometimes just so grotesque and it's almost kind of gory sometimes, and particularly in the kind of the first season, I think. Um, but it's, yeah, there's just so many kind of different fun elements that that we can play with in this kind of small set. And the fact that we don't leave as well, I think, kind of amplifies all these things. So it's, right. it's a really interesting place to play a scene. So you've described yourself in the past as a bit of a mysterious person and you said that Julian helps you tap into the cynical part of yourself that people may not know. So can you tell us more about this cynical Rupert? Yeah, it doesn't come out very often. I'm quite a optimistic kind of, I'm a very kind of laid back guy, unlike Julian who is kind of on a knife edge constantly. But yeah, I think that, I mean, Julian does live within me somewhere, I think. Um, and yeah, I do have a, I guess, like everyone, I suppose, a, a kind of darker side that uh, reveals itself in, in certain situations. And yeah, I think it's my, my humor as well is, is, is quite, quite dark. In under an hour, Dorothy's gonna get here. She's gonna kick off her shoes and scurry up the stairs and check the crib. What will she find? That's a funny question. Oh, well, I'm in a funny mood. What did she find? Jericho. The baby she thinks is Jericho. Good. Let's work with that. Where is it? He's in his grip. Am I negotiating with someone with a reduced mental capacity? What do you want? So Julian really goes through it this season um, as the stress of trying to manage this whole situation around the baby and possibly coming back, it just becomes overwhelming. How would you describe his arc this season, especially as compared to what was happening in season one? I think the whole dynamic has changed this season. Now Dorothy kind of has so much more power. We're not just there kind of gaslighting constantly. It's, it's now a kind of a missing child uh, situation and the power has shifted and it's about kind of managing her but still kind of coping with her own kind of grief and guilt. I think that's something that we kind of is revealed in this series that how how Julian is linked to this charity. He obviously found the body um, but we also learn that he also had other other elements where he feels kind of responsible that he could have, things could have been different mm -hmm. had he not been uh, focused on himself. Um, so yeah, I think he's holding a lot of this and it's just naturally just kind of with his addiction is kind of progressively getting worse. He's, he's kind of using all these things to, to try and block everything out that it, it just gets too much and the, it, it can't take it and it kind of, uh, the pressure releases, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, he's pretty manic <laughs> this season. And episode nine is a really incredible one for you because, you know, Julian is like really pushed to his limits, especially when his dad comes to visit and you can tell there's a whole history there and he ends up overdosing. Tell us about, you know, what was shooting those scenes? What was that like? Um, yeah, I mean, this season anyway, was it was kind of strange because it was split into kind of two halves because of obviously the pandemic. Um, so we had this huge break in between and... Um, 
yeah, it was it was interesting kind of coming back. And obviously I just had a kid, I'm now a father, all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> in this weird world. Such a weird family anyway. Um, so it's, yeah, it was there was a lot going on. I think I, I, I could see this coming, even though we, as I said before, we don't get the scripts in advance. This was kind of always on the cards, I think, for Julian. And I think whenever Frank, the, the dad, is involved, I think that does something to Julian and that kind of family dynamic that we we don't really know a lot about yet. I was going to ask you, have you come up with maybe some of your own theories or your own backstory about what might have gone on there? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it will be kind of revealed, I think, in the the coming season. But um, yeah, I mean, this stuff, it's a weird, they're a weird family. <laughs> um, and I think class is kind of plays a part in that as well. It's they're kind of very kind of always keeping up appearances, and, and I think that is kind of. Uh, that that has been a part of, of their kind of psyche. Yeah, I think the mother as well will learn. I think more about what happened there. And I, I mean, I, I'm I'm worried about what I'm saying, but um, yeah, <laughs> it, it will all that will that will all uh, make sense eventually. But okay, it's, uh, it's an interesting chemistry. And how about what Julian says when he's revived? He says, "I saw him there." Are we going to, you know, there are a lot of theories as to what he could mean by that. Uh, is that something that will play out perhaps in season three? Yeah, I mean, perhaps. I think with, with everything in this show, which is, I guess, frustrating, but for me it's quite fun, is it's kind of just when you want to lean on to kind of something maybe supernatural, it yeah. never fully commits. There's like, there's always a rational explanation. It's, it's, yeah, more will be revealed on that, but it's, more um, will be revealed. sure. <laughs> and as you mentioned, obviously the, you know, production had to shut down for several months. And when you went back to, to work, you had become a father. Congratulations. Um, so yeah, how does, I mean, obviously this is a show about grief and about parents mourning a baby and not knowing how to deal with that grief. How did that, how did coming back after becoming a new dad how did that change your perspective on just all these characters and what they're going through yeah no it really did it, it kind of um almost kind of instantly it was yeah, it kind of changed my perspective especially on kind of like the stakes and, and kind of what you will do for your baby and that right. powerful love is something i didn't really have much of a concept before but kind of now being in that it's it's uh yeah, very powerful. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's still, it, 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 there's something kind of eerie about it as well, because especially now, that um, Wednesday, um, my daughter is the same age as Jericho. Oh. So weirdly, they're kind of now in sync and like going through the same milestones and there's been some, yeah, and obviously being surrounded by all of this is, is yeah, it, it, it's challenging, definitely. But it's, uh, again, yeah, very helpful as well, I think. I think maybe you probably had the funniest line on TV this past year with um, when <laughs> Julian was attempting to explain to his dad's girlfriend what was going on. And he's like, keep up. They had a baby. Then it was a fake baby. And then it was a real baby. Now it's a fake baby again. Like, I need to know, how did you get through that without like, because he's so angry and just like frustrated. At, but you you get through it with such perfect, you know, precision was it hard to do without laughing <laughs> yeah I mean I think with that line I mean I don't think kind of Julian sees the funny side of it it, it kind of is this just ridiculous kind of uh, series of events um, and I think it kind of also it kind of echoes what maybe the audience are probably thinking as well kind of keeping track of where this has kind of escalated. You know, finally, so Servant has some pretty high-profile fans. Uh, Stephen King has raved about the show, and uh, Guillermo del Toro has raved about it and praised your performance in, partic in particular, said you were a scene-stealer. What's it been like to get this kind of feedback? Um, yeah, I mean, amazing, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it means so much, because, I mean, I think it is such a unique show, and it's you never really know kind of how it's going to be kind of perceived and I, I yeah I, lo I love that it kind of is making kind of audiences ask the question like what would you do in this situation it's such an absurd kind of scenario and and hearing people's theories is always fascinating I had some strange theories at the beginning I went down a whole like sixth sense rabbit hole where I thought maybe one of us was dead 
Um, <laughs> it could still, I, I, it hasn't been disproven yet, I guess. But um, yeah, it's and that's do, the kind of fun of the show, I think. Do you run these theories by Tony or by Knight? No, I haven't. No, they, they, they are never going to reveal any secrets. It's a very kind of closed shop in that front. We just have to wait and see. Well, it's been a real joy talking to you and congratulations on the show. Second season, even better than the first. I'm excited to see the third and yeah. uh, congratulations on your baby and Thank you so much. have a great rest of your week. Yeah, and you have a great one.